Hello, this is Abby from OllieHolly.com. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this cute little bat. You can use this pattern to create plushies, ornaments, or string a few of them up to create a cute Halloween themed garland. This is actually one of my most popular patterns and I do get a lot of questions about the wings in particular so I hope this video helps to clear things up for those of you who may be struggling with it. As usual, timestamps for each part of the pattern will be in the description box down below so you can skip to the parts that you need help with. And if you're interested in following along with a written pattern, you'll find the free pattern on my blog or the printable PDF in my shop. Both will be linked down below. Here are the terms and abbreviations I'll be using in this video. And here are the materials I'll be using to create my bat. For the crocheting portions of this video, I'm going to be using Burnout Maker yarn with a 3.5mm crochet hook because the stitches show up better on camera with this yarn and hook combination. But when assembling the bat, I will revert back to the cotton yarn to fully demonstrate how I sew all the parts together and stiffen the wings. The first part we're going to be working on is the head and body, which is worked in one piece. And to start, I'm going to make a magic circle. To make a magic circle, I'm holding the tail end down with my thumb. Then I'm taking the working end of the yarn and I'm wrapping it around my fingers and crossing it over the tail strand then running it down the back of my hands like so, and securing it down with my pinky. You'll see that there are two strands here, and I'm inserting my hook under the right strand and over the left. Then I'm pulling the left strand under the right, and I'm going to twist my hook up towards me to form a loop on my hook. Then I'm inserting my hook under the working end of the yarn, which is this strand right here, and I'm pulling this strand through the loop on my hook. If you need some help with the magic circle, I have a more dedicated video tutorial and I'll link it in the description box down below. For round one of the head and body, we're going to be working six single crochet into the magic circle. When making amigurumi, I like to do the yarn under, yarn over single crochet. So that's what I'm going to be doing throughout this video. To work the yarn under, yarn over single crochet, Insert your hook into the magic circle, making sure your hook is going under both the circle and the yarn tail. Then yarn under, so you're wrapping the yarn under the hook, and it kind of feels like a front to back motion, and pull a loop up. Then you're going to yarn over, so you're wrapping the yarn over the top of the hook, going from the back to the front, and pull a loop up through the two loops on your hook, and that's one. Now let's do that again. Insert your hook into the magic circle, yarn under and pull a loop up, then yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. So that's two. And again, insert into the magic circle, yarn under to pull a loop up, yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. So that's three, four, five, and six. Once you have all six stitches done, pull on the yarn tail from the magic circle to close out the magic circle fully. In round two, work an increase into each stitch for a total of 12 stitches. So insert your hook into the first stitch and work your first single crochet. Then insert your hook back into the same stitch you just worked into and work another single crochet. So that's the first increase. I'll be using a stitch marker to mark the first stitch of each round so that you can see where I'm at at all times. So into the next stitch, we're going to work another increase stitch. So one, then back into the same stitch, two. You can pause here to continue increasing into each stitch for a total of 12 stitches. And I'll meet you at the beginning of round three. In round three, alternate between working a single crochet, then increasing in the next. 
We're going to be repeating that a total of six times until we have a total of 18 stitches. So what that looks like is single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, and then continue that all the way around. So into that first stitch, we're going to work a single crochet. Then into the next, we're going to increase. So that's one, then back into the same stitch, two. Then we're just going to continue, so single crochet, increase in the next, And now you can pause here to continue working the rest of this round. Remember, you're alternating between working one single crochet and increasing in the next, all the way around until you have a total of 18 stitches. I'll meet you at the beginning of round four. In round four, alternate between working a single crochet, increase, then single crochet again. Repeat that all the way around. So what that looks like is single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, and repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 24 stitches. So into that first stitch, single crochet, then into the next we're going to increase, so that's one, back into the same stitch, two. Then again, single crochet into the next stitch. So that's the first set done. Now we're going to repeat it. So single crochet, increase, then single crochet again. Pause here to continue working the rest of round four and I'll meet you at the beginning of round five. Remember you're alternating between working a single crochet increasing in the next, and then another single crochet. You should have a total of 24 stitches by the time you are done with this round. In round five, alternate between working three single crochet, then increase. Repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 30 stitches. So that's one, two, three, increase one, two, three, increase, and so on. So that's one, two, three, increase. Then again, one, two, three, increase. Pause here to continue working the rest of round five and I'll meet you at the beginning of round six. Remember, you're going to be alternating between working three single crochet and increasing in the next, all the way around until you have a total of 30 stitches. In round six, alternate between working two single crochet, increase, then two single crochet. Repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 36 stitches. So what that looks like is single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, increase, single crochet, single crochet. So that's one, two, increase in the next, Then one, two. And just repeat that again. So one, two, increase. One, Two. You can pause here to continue working round six and I'll meet you at the beginning of round seven. Remember you're alternating between working two single crochet, increase, then two single crochet again. 
You should have a total of 36 stitches by the time you are done with this round. For the next two rounds, so that's rounds seven and eight, work one single crochet into each stitch. You can pause here to work the next two rounds and I'll meet you at the beginning of round nine. In round nine, alternate between working five single crochet, then increasing. Repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 42 stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, increase. One, two, three, four, five, increase. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Increase. Then again, one, two, three, four, five, increase. Pause here to continue working round nine and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 10. Remember you're alternating between working five single crochet then increasing in the next for a total of 42 stitches. In round 10, work one single crochet into each stitch for a total of 42 stitches. Pause here to work the rest of round 10 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 11. In round 11, we're going to start decreasing. So we're going to alternate between working five single crochet, then decreasing. Repeat that all the way around and you should have a total of 36 stitches by the time you're done. So that's one, two, three, four, five, decrease. One, two, three, four, five, decrease. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and decrease. To work the invisible decrease with a yarn under yarn over method, insert your hook into the front loops of the next two stitches, then yarn under and pull a loop up, and yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. Then again, one, two, three, four, five, decrease. Pause here to work the rest of round 11 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 12. In round 12, work one single crochet into each stitch for a total of 36 stitches. Pause here to work round 12 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 13. In round 13, alternate between working two single crochet, decrease, then two single crochet. So that's two, decrease, two, two, decrease, two. Repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 30 stitches. So that's one, two, decrease, one, two, then again, so one, two, decrease, one, two. Pause here to continue working the rest of round 13 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 14. Remember, you're alternating between working two single crochet, decrease, then two single crochet again. In round 14, work one single crochet into each stitch for a total of 30 stitches. Pause here to work round 14 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 15. Before I continue on to round 15, I'm going to snap in the safety eyes first. 
For the eye placements, I'm inserting the eyes between rounds 10 and 11, and I'm leaving a 5 stitch space between the eyes. To snap the eyes in, I'm using this amazing tool from Craft Easy Tools. It really does make it so much easier to snap in the backings for the eyes in. In round 15, alternate between working 3 single crochet then decreasing. Repeat that all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. So that's 1, 2, 3, decrease. 1, 2, 3, decrease. And repeat that all the way around. So that's one, two, three, decrease, then again one, two, three, decrease. Pause here to continue alternating between working three single crochet then decreasing and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 16. In round 16, alternate between working a single crochet, decreasing, then single crochet again. Repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 18 stitches. So that's single crochet, decrease, single crochet, single crochet, decrease, single crochet. So that's one. Decrease, one, then again, one, decrease, one. You can pause here to continue working the rest of round 16 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 17. Before continuing on to round 17, I'm going to start stuffing the head. And that's because the hole is going to become smaller and it's going to become more difficult to stuff the head later on. In round 17, alternate between working a single crochet then decreasing. Repeat that all the way around until you have a total of 12 stitches. So into that first stitch, work a single crochet. That's one. Decrease the next two stitches. Then again, single crochet. And decrease. Pause here to continue alternating between working one single crochet and decreasing. And I'll meet you at the beginning of round 18. You should have a total of 12 stitches by the time you are done with this round. Before continuing on to round 18, I'm going to stuff the head a little bit more to make sure that the head is stuffed fully. In round 18, alternate between working two single crochet then decrease. Repeat that a total of three times for a total of nine stitches. So that's one, Two, decrease, then again, one, two, decrease, Then one last time. One, two, decrease. In round 19, we'll be working into the front loops only for the entire round. When you take a closer look at your stitch, you'll see that there are two loops that make up the top of each stitch. For this round, work into the front loops only, which is this loop that is closest to you. 
So for round 19, work one increase into each front loop. You should have a total of 18 stitches by the time you are done with this round. Insert your hook into the first front loop and increase. So that's one. Back into the same front loop. Two. Then into the next front loop. One. Back into the same front loop. Two. Pause here to continue increasing into each front loop and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 20. You should have a total of 18 stitches by the time you are done with this round. In round 20, alternate between working five single crochet and increasing. Repeat this a total of three times all the way around for a total of 21 stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and increase in the next. So that's one, then back into the same stitch, two. Now just repeat that again. So one, two, three, four, five, increase. Then one last time. So one, two, three, four, five, increase. For rounds 21 to 23, so that's the next three rounds, work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Pause here to work the next three rounds and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 24. In round 24, alternate between working five single crochet, then decreasing. Repeat this a total of three times all the way around for a total of 18 stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and decrease. Then again, one, two, three, four, five, decrease. Then one last time, one, two, three, four, five, decrease. In round 25, work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Pause here to work round 25 and I'll meet you at the beginning of round 26. In round 26, alternate between working two single crochet, decreasing, then another two single crochet. Repeat that set a total of three times for a total of 15 stitches. So that's one, two, decrease, one, two. Then we're just going to repeat the set again. 
So one, two, decrease, one, two. Then one last time, so one, two, decrease, one, two. In round 27, alternate between working three single crochet and decreasing. Repeat this a total of three times all the way around for a total of 12 stitches. So that's one, two, three, decrease. Then again, one, two, three, decrease, and one final set, one, two, three, decrease. In the final round, work one single crochet into each stitch for a total of 12 stitches. Pause here to work round 28 and I'll show you how to finish off the head and body afterwards. Once you are done with the final round, cut the working end of the yarn and pull your hook up to fasten off. Stuff the body fully with some polyfill yarn. After stuffing the body fully, Thread the yarn tail onto a darning needle, then close the hole up. To close the hole up, simply thread your darning needle through the front loops only of each stitch. Make sure to pull through and tug slightly with each stitch. This should cinch up the hole and give the bottom of your piece a very neat finish. Once you've gone through all of the stitches, weave the tail into the body. After this first pass through the body, I like to go over one more stitch to fully secure this tail. Then I'm just cutting the yarn tail as close to the body as possible, and then I'm squishing the body to hide the tail. Next, we're going to be working on the ears. For the ears, start by making a magic circle. In round one, work four single crochet stitches into this magic circle. So that's one, two, three, and four. Pull on the tail from the magic circle to close up the hole in the center fully. In round two, alternate between working one single crochet and increasing in the next. Repeat this twice and you should have a total of six stitches by the time you are done with this round. So that's one. Increase in the next. So that's the first stitch. Back into the same stitch. Two. Then into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Then increase again in the next stitch. When working with something so small, it's a good idea to push the sides up slightly to make it easier to crochet with. So for this, I'm just pushing the sides up with my fingers to make it more cone shaped. I'm also trimming the yarn tail from the magic circle so that it doesn't get in the way as much for the next few rounds. In round three, alternate between working one single crochet and increase. Repeat this a total of three times for a total of nine stitches. So that's one, increase in the next, two, 
then repeat so one increase in the next then one last time one and increase into that final stitch In round four, alternate between working two single crochet and increase. Repeat this a total of three times for a total of 12 stitches. So that's one, two, increase, then repeat the set again. So that's one, two, increase, then repeat the set one more time. So one, two, increase. And just to keep the tail from the magic circle out of the way, I'm going to tuck it into the ear. In round five, work one single crochet into each stitch. Pause here to work round five and I'll meet you at the beginning of round six. In round six, alternate between working two single crochet and decreasing. Repeat that a total of three times for a total of nine stitches. So that's one, two, decrease, then again, one, two, decrease, Then one final time, one, two, decrease. In the final round, work one single crochet into each stitch for a total of nine stitches. Pause here to work round seven and I'll meet you when fastening off. When cutting the yarn tail, make sure to leave at least six to seven inches because we will be using this tail to sew the ears to the head. Pull your hook up and fasten off, then set this piece aside and make one more ear. Next, let's work on the feet. To start, make a magic circle. In round one, work four single crochet into this magic circle. So that's one, two, three, and four. Pull on the tail from the magic circle to cinch up the hole in the center. For the next two rounds, which is rounds two and three, work one single crochet into each stitch. Now because there are only four single crochet in this magic circle, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to work with. Just do your best to wiggle your hook into the stitches. You can pause here to work the next two rounds and I'll meet you to fasten off. When cutting the yarn tail, make sure to leave at least five to six inches because we'll be using this tail to sew the foot to the body. Fasten off, then set this piece aside and make one more foot. Finally, let's work on the wings. To start, make a slip knot with a really long tail. This tail is going to be used for sewing the wings together and also to sew the wings to the body. So you'll want to leave at least eight to nine inches. For row one of the wings, start by chaining 21. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Next, we're going to work into the chain. And when working into a chain, I like to work into the back bumps of the chain. When you take a look at the chain from the front, you'll see it looks like little V's stacked on top of each other. When you flip the chain over, you'll see these little bumps here. So what I like to do is to insert my hook underneath those bumps. For row one, we're going to skip the first chain, which is this first bump right here, and work one single crochet into each of the remaining chains for a total of 20 stitches. So that's one. Then again, insert into the next bump. Two. I'm gonna show you again, insert into the next bump. Three. Pause here to continue working one single crochet into each chain and I'll meet you at the beginning of row two. You should have a total of 20 single crochet by the time you are done with row one. To set up for row two, turn your work. Make sure that the working end of the yarn is towards the back of the piece like so. And from here, we're going to work row two. In row two, start by working 14 single crochet. So for this piece, unless stated otherwise, you do not need to chain one at the beginning of the row. Instead, just work directly into the first stitch. So I'm just inserting my hook directly into that first stitch, then working my first single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Then we're going to be working five half double crochet. So yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over again and pull a loop up. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull it through the three loops on your hook. So that's one. Then again into the next stitch, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch and yarn over to pull a loop up. Then yarn over and pull it through the three loops on your hook. So that's two. Three. Four. And five. And you're going to notice that there's actually one stitch left over and we're going to just skip that completely and not work into it at all. To set up for row three, turn your work. In row three, start by chaining two. So that's one and two. Next, we're going to work six half double crochet. Make sure that you're not working into the chain two at the beginning of this round because these two chains are just to build up the height for the sides. So six half double crochet. That's one. Two. Three. Four. five, and six. Then work eight single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, 
and eight. And finally, work three slip stitches. So that's one, two, and three. You'll see that there are two stitches left and we're going to just leave them unworked and continue to the next row. To set up for row four, turn your work. In row four, start by skipping this first stitch here. And instead, we're going to start in the second stitch. From there, we're going to work five slip stitches. So into the second stitch from my hook, I'm going to work my first slip stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Then work three single crochet. So that's one, two, and three. Then work three half double crochet. So that's one, two, and three. And finally, we're going to work four double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull a loop up. Then yarn over again and pull it through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over one more time and pull it through the remaining two loops on your hook. So that's one, two, three, and four. You're going to notice that there's one stitch left. Leave that stitch unworked, then turn your piece to set up for the next row. In row five, start by chaining two. So that's one and two. Then we're going to work four double crochet. So that's one, two, three, and four. Next, work four half double crochet. So that's one, two, three, and four. Then work three single crochet. So that's one, two, and three. And finally, work two slip stitch. So that's one, and two. Leave the remaining two stitches unworked, then turn to set up for row six. In row six, we're going to start by skipping the first stitch and start in the second stitch instead. From here, we're going to start by working two slip stitches. So I've inserted my hook into the second stitch and worked one slip stitch. Then into the next stitch, my second slip stitch. Into the next stitch, work one half double crochet. Now we're going to be making the first spike of the wing. Start by chaining two. Then work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So that's one and two. Insert your hook into the center of the second chain and out the back. Then work a single crochet. Then in the next stitch, we're going to work a single crochet. Next, we're going to work two slip stitches. So one into each of the next two. So that's one, then into the next stitch, two. Into the next stitch, work a half double crochet. 
Then we're going to create the second wing spike. So start by chaining two, then work a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So insert your hook into the second chain from the hook and make a single crochet. Into the next stitch, work a half double crochet. Then work two slip stitches. So that's one and two. And finally, we're going to be working on the final wing spike. Into that next stitch, we're going to work a double crochet. Then chain two and work a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And finally, into that final stitch there, work a double crochet. Now that the wing spikes are done, you'll notice that the side of the wing is looking a little jagged. So what we're going to do now is pick up seven single crochet stitches as evenly as possible along the side here. What I like to do is just map it out first, then eyeball where I can insert my hook into. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just to make this corner a little neater looking, I'm going to slip stitch into this chain that's in the corner here. And finally, we can cut the working end of the yarn and fasten off. You do not need to leave a long yarn tail here. Just make sure to leave enough so that you can weave the yarn tail in. To make this corner even neater looking, what you can do is insert your darning needle under the second chain on top here and pull through. Then insert your needle back into the center of your slip stitch and out the back, then pull through. Doing so creates this false stitch on top that gives it a more seamless look. Then just weave the tail into the back of the wing and trim any excess yarn after it's fully secure. Now that all of the parts are made, we can start assembling the bat together. First, we need to sew the two wings together. And to do so, I'm overlapping about an inch and a half of the center over each other. I'm lining the bottom sides together so that the top flares upwards slightly. If you line the top together instead, the wings are going to look a little bit more droopy. Using the yarn tail from one of the wings, Sew the overlapped parts together. Once the overlap parts are fully sewn together, you can weave this tail into the wing and cut off any excess yarn. Make sure to leave the other yarn tail from the wings untouched. We're going to be using that to sew the wings to the body. Now that the wings are sewn together, we can stiffen the wings so that when the bat is hanging, the wings won't flop down. We can also take this opportunity to block the wings so that the tips are a little bit sharper. The fabric stiffener I'm using is just equal parts glue and water mixed together. You just want to make sure that the glue you use dries clear. Also, if you're making your bat into a stuffed animal for a child to play with, I would skip this part completely. To stiffen the wings, I'm fully saturating the wings with the solution while avoiding getting it in the middle where we need to sew the wings to the body later on. I'm using a clean paintbrush to help evenly distribute the fabric stiffener. Then I'm flipping the wings over and saturating the parts that were missed from the first application. 
And before I pin it down to shape, I'm just going to take some paper towel to clean the foam board up and wick off any extra solution from the wings itself. Doing this will help it dry a little bit faster. Before it starts to dry, pin the wings to the foam board. You'll want to pin the corners out and this will make sure that the wing tips look more pronounced once it's fully dry. While the wings are drying, we can start sewing the ears and the feet to the main piece. For the ear placement, I want the top of the ears to start at round 5 of the head. And before sewing, I like to pin my pieces to the main piece. This allows me to play around with the positioning of the pieces before I fully commit to sewing them down. It also helps to secure the pieces down while I'm sewing it together. To ensure that the position of the ears are more even, I'm counting the stitches between the eyes and the ears for both sides to make sure that the space on both sides are as similar as possible. And here's a quick sewing hack when working with cotton yarn. You can split your yarn into two bundles so that you have two thinner pieces of yarn to work with. I find that thinner yarn is easier to sew with and the sewn stitches are less noticeable because the yarn is less bulky. The yarn I'm using is 8-ply, so I'm splitting it down so that it's now two bundles of 4-ply yarn. To start sewing, start by threading one of the bundles of yarn through the head, directly under where the yarn is, and out the back. This strand is now acting as an anchor, so you can remove this pin here. Using the other bundle, sew the ears to the head. So I'm just threading the yarn through a stitch on the head, directly below where the yarn is on the ears and I'm pulling through. Then I'm inserting my yarn through the next stitch on the ears and pulling through. And I'm just going to continue to repeat these two steps all the way around the ears until the ears are fully sewn onto the head. After the ears are fully sewn to the head and you're back at where you started, insert your needle into the head directly below where the yarn is on the ears and out the back in the exact same spot the first bundle is coming out of. Tie a tight double knot with these two strands of yarn to fully secure the ears. Then cut off any excess yarn tails. You can hide this knot into the head by stabbing it in with something skinny and sharp like scissors or a skewer. Next, I'm going to be sewing the feet to the body and I just want the top of the feet to be about three rounds from the bottom. I left this yarn tail from the magic circle, so I'm going to be anchoring the feet down in place with this yarn tail. And as for the positioning of the feet, I also wanted to line up with the ears. With the tail from the magic circle on my needle, I'm threading this yarn tail through the spot I want the foot to be in and out the back. And to make it easier, I'm going to add a pin to this foot to keep it from spinning around when I'm sewing later on. Repeat this with the other foot, making sure that the yarn tail from the magic circle is coming out of the same spot as the other yarn tail. Tie a tight double knot with these two yarn tails, then cut off any excess yarn and hide the knot. Sew the feet to the body in the same way the ears are sewn to the head. With black embroidery floss, embroider in a slight smile between the eyes. I have a more dedicated embroidery tutorial and I'll link it down below for those of you who might need a little bit more help with embroidery. Using the blush pink yarn, embroider in the blush and the nose. And for the little teeth, cut out small triangles of white felt and use some fabric glue to glue it to the mouth. I find it's really useful to use toothpicks when gluing smaller details like these. And finally, let's attach the wings now that they are dry. To start, I'm pinning the wings to the body, making sure that the wings are symmetrical on both sides. Then I'm just taking the remaining yarn tail from the wings and sewing the center portion of the wings to the body. For this, I'm not going to split the yarn into two bundles, but you can if you want. Once the wings are fully sewn onto the body, you can weave the tail in, then cut your yarn tail to hide it. To turn your bat into an ornament, you can thread a piece of yarn or ribbon through the bottom of the body, then tie a knot to create a loop. To turn them into a garland, you can string a few of them up with some pom-poms. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for following along, and I hope to see you in the next one.
If you like this video, please consider subscribing or check out a few of my other videos on my channel. Bye-bye.